Welcome back. The retail industry is considered as one of the most actively developing economic sectors globally. So how has the industry fared over the last 10 months? And what are the emerging trends that will shape the sector going forward? Well, to discuss this, we're joined by David McAdam, the head of the retail for the MENA region at Jones Lang LaSalle. Welcome to the show today. Thanks, Laura. Great to be here. Now, retail within Dubai really has been a part of Dubai's history. How has it evolved over the years and what's happened this past year as well? What have we seen? Well, there's two questions. First of all, it's become a lot uh, more sophisticated than it has been. In the early mid-90s when Dira City Center opened, it was quite rudimentary. And now with the opening of Dubai Mall and also Mall of the Emirates, it's very sophisticated. It's on a global basis. So, yeah, so and, and on, um, on a global scale, sort of moving away from Dubai, James Lang LaSalle has come out with a recent report, Projections for 2020. Tell us about some of the key findings as well. Uh, the Retail 2020 report that Jones Lang LaSalle brought forward was really about the future of retailing. So it's about the next 10 years, 2010 to 2020. And it's all about what we see happening. And we had some futurologists work on behalf of the company to, to give guidance on this as well. And we overlaid this with our existing knowledge of what's going on in the industry. But primarily, I think the demographics that we see in the future, particularly in this region with a very young demographic, we're seeing a trend towards more online shopping, more demand from the consumer, uh, more brand recognition, because if you're going to shop online, you have to know exactly what it is you're looking for. And uh, I think that overall, we're seeing perhaps a situation where in other parts of the world, not necessarily this region, there's going to be less shoppers per se in the traditional environments that you see in, in the West. So in terms of online today, how, how are we faring today and what's the offline sort of sector doing about the online? Well, I think let's talk about this region first of all. Uh, this region is very unique because the mall uh, elements, the, the retail environments that we have here are really more of a social, uh, cultural place where you can meet and greet. So yeah. people go there for a social period in their life. Whereas in the West, I think it's more of something that you do when you have to go shopping. So uh, the West, I think, uh, is much different than here, and I think what we'll see in the future, perhaps here, is more online shopping, but that'll mean that the service elements that are in the retail shops here are going to have to get a little sharper. Um, I, I say that because when you're competing on an internet, it's much different than when you're competing one-on-one -on -one in, in a shopping environment. And the service that people are looking for now inside the shops and on the internet are something where I believe that everyone's going to have to raise, raise the bar to get there. So, so where are we now in terms of sort of service within, within retail? How is that sort of looking? Where are we now? Where are we now in terms of the service? I think that in this region we have a ways to go. Uh, I believe that it is a function of the training that people need to be effective. I think that people have to have some kind of a uh, um, it has to be a passion for them. And in some places, in some of the retail shops in this region, I don't see that true passion that you need to be able to sell what it is you wanted to sell, whatever that product. And also in terms of online as well, I mean, there is a, quite a lack of Arabic content. That's one of the sort of key issues that they're sort of trying to drive now at the moment as well, aren't they? So can you see that advancing over the next 10 years? Well, I think it will advance, absolutely. And that's what we say it will do as well, uh, the, there's a couple of things. There's barriers to entry, and that is all about financial. And to put together the financial wherewithal to make your website work effectively is, is, is a significant investment. I'm not sure locally that many of the companies are at that level. However, the companies that have the brands that already have those abilities on, the, on a global basis I think will benefit from having those uh, associations with those brands. There was also an area in your report that said that uh, shopping centers need to expand and grow as well into different areas. Can mm. you tell us a little bit about that as well, Frank? Sure. It's something that I believe that Mall of the Emirates has already successfully grasped. And it's more of a, um, it's a social setting, it's an entertainment, it's a recreation, it's some place to hang out, it's a place that you also shop, uh, which is important. And it's also some place where, uh, for example, uh, a Carrefour exists or, or hypermarkets. So 
in other parts of the world, you don't normally see hypermarkets attached inside uh, these super regional malls. Because it's quite an American thing, these, these malls, aren't they? Cause, I mean, they, they're sort of being established in, in the UK and various areas, but they're quite a new thing in, in, in those areas, I suppose, aren't they? Well, I think that um, if you look at Mall of the Emirates now, it's, what, four years old and it's trading. And it's, um, to give you an idea, in terms of its um, ability to generate sales densities, as we call it in the industry, it was number one. It was the number one trading shopping center in the world for a couple of years. So it states that the, the, the Majid al Futain family who built this uh, have really done a lot of things right. So they've traveled the world well, they've figured out what it is that people want, and they've actually delivered on the promise. So they've been very successful. Some of the other malls in, in the region are probably not as successful for the reasons that they maybe not have studied it the way they should have. And for your report as well, what have you sort of, um, how have you gathered all this information together to, to, to get the, these predictions as well? Because I mean, you, you had a report out in 2000, didn't you? Right. It was, uh, that was the forerunner of the, 20, uh, the 2020 report. Yeah. Um, and what we had thought was that 2010 at the time, look at all the things that are going to happen. And one of the things that we did under call, which was a surprise, was we perhaps underestimated slightly the future with respect to the web-based sales. Right. But in this report, I think you may have read that we really think that there's going to be a growth in web-based sales, and I think that'll be a benefit for all retailers. Thanks so much for coming on the show. It's been a pleasure speaking with you. My pleasure. Thank you. Well, that's it from the business desk. You can write to us, though, at ib at city7tv.com. Up next, Natasha Thomas is back with the news and the details of how Dubai International Film Festival is promoting Emirati filmmakers.